Hey everyone, uh, nice to meet folks. Really excited to be talking with you today. I am Megan Donahue, VP of Business Development and Growth at Bounteous. I oversee um, our Acquia partnership and work really, really closely with both Lerone and Chris, who you'll hear from today um, on all things Drupal, Acquia. Uh, really looking forward to, to today's discussion. Uh, Lerone, do you want to introduce yourself? Absolutely, thank you. My name is Lerone Walker, Senior Director of Acquia Development. And uh, I help our clients win with Drupal and uh, also help support our partnership with Acquia. Awesome. Thanks, Lerone. Chris, what about you? I'm Chris Creightons. I'm VP of Drupal Engineering here at uh, Bounteous. Uh, been working with Drupal for a long, long time uh, and working with Megan and Lerone on the Acquia partnership. So happy to share some information with you today. Great. Thanks, guys. All right, so why are we here today? Well, uh, we've all been hearing, I think, over and over again about headless or decoupled or some form of that terminology. Um, and then we hear a lot about, well, what does that mean for me as an organization? You know, I'm in the marketing department. What does that mean? I'm part of a technology team. What does that mean? Um, but the questions we get asked most often are about the approach that a company should take and why and what the impact might be. Um, and so there's clearly kind of a lack of understanding the value and the differences between the various approaches and what it can mean for a business. And today we, we hope to clarify that a bit by answering some of the common questions that our customers um, are asking themselves and oftentimes asking us to answer for them. Um, so we're gonna spend a little bit of time covering off on these four items here. The first one, you've been charged with enabling a transformative brand experience, but what does that really mean for your organization? Uh, Drupal is your platform of choice, but where do you start? What approaches um, to build are there to consider? Third, how do you determine the best approach for your organization today and in the future? And fourth, how do you avoid some of the common pitfalls with any of these approaches? Um, we all know that nothing is perfect, uh, but having an understanding of sort of the common pitfalls um, is really helpful in terms of, you know, thinking about what the best approach is for your organization. And before I get started today, I just wanted to spend a few minutes um, telling you a little bit about Bounteous, really who we are uh, and why we're all so passionate about helping our customers get this uh, Drupal approach thing right in today's, in today's world. Um, at Bounteous, we exist to help leading companies win digitally by continuously innovating brand experiences that drive transformative results. Uh, continuous innovation in our world is really about a culture of capturing insights um, applying those insights, testing and learning digital experiences. And transformation means changing business models, uh, you know, introducing new and improved streams of revenue, evolving brands, um, you know, platform evolution to drive enablement and operational efficiencies, and, and so much more. At the crux, um, we are a digital first firm that sits at the intersection of a management consultancy. Um, so a lot of the work that we do is really about supporting our customers through their digital transformation, helping define, you know, the, their overarching brand strategies and visions and bringing those to life. Um, we are also a digital agency where we spend a lot of time designing, building, optimizing, and marketing digital experiences for our customers. And we are a systems integrator with a big focus on platforms and a longstanding relationship that we have with Acquia and the Drupal community, for example. Um, and this is where we're going to spend most of our time today. Uh, as a company, uh, we work very closely with our customers to drive transformative experiences via what we call our co-innovation framework, which is made up of uh, three core elements that you see here on the screen. Um, critical insight or insights being the first one. We must have critical insight or insights to drive hypotheses for the things that we create. We can no longer create things because it sounds fun or it's the newest and greatest thing to do. We have to create based on insights that we have about our customers, our business, um, the changing landscape, something. Digital flow, uh, second here, is really about our ability to apply those insights repeatedly into the digital experiences that we create to deliver optimized experiences and continue to get smarter and smarter as a business about how we're enabling our customers to get to some kind of end result. Um, you know, things like machine learning come into play here as we continue to gather more and more insights about our customers and determine how best to apply those. And none of this is possible without enablement. Um, and this is really about ensuring we have the right approaches and the right models and the right people and processes in place to be able to deliver continuous innovation. 
And if we peel back our enablement model further, this is where today's conversation really becomes applicable. Um, each aspect of this model must be custom built for you in order to successfully deliver, you know, these innovative brand experiences that we talk about and that meet your individual businesses goals and objectives. Um, on the outer ring here, we must have a clear strategy for what the business is trying to achieve. You know, what are our business goals and objectives? What are we as an organization trying to enable to be able to support those goals and objectives? And then as we look at sort of these inner circles, um, you know, what are the people and the methods that are going to be required to deliver these experiences? Um, what data and technology platforms must be in place to support in achieving these goals and objectives? And if we look at technology and methods and talent, you know, this is where we see questions around platforms and capabilities and approaches like headless or decoupled um, really come up more and more. And so while we're not going to spend a lot of time today talking about, you know, how we help you solve the entire enablement model equation, we will start to help you think about your decision around Drupal builds by way of leveraging this enablement model. Um, these pieces are critical to being able to help you deliver your next innovative brand experience. And with that, I invite Larone, um, who you met earlier in the call, to get into the meat of today's discussion. Excellent. Thank you so much, Megan. Uh, so how to approach Drupal builds? Today, we're going to cover three approaches to building digital experiences in Drupal. But before we get into specifics, let's highlight a few scenarios you may have experienced within your own organization. So do any of these scenarios sound familiar? You're trying to gain operational efficiencies by not waiting weeks to update the homepage. Or maybe there's a desire to put more control in the hands of marketing with less reliance on IT uh, because content is ready, but you need to coordinate with developers to add it to the site. Or maybe you have this amazing story to tell, but it's difficult to share that compelling story on your current site. Uh, so if any of these scenarios sound familiar, even just a little bit, uh, don't worry, you're not alone. We're gonna shift our focus today to talk about how we can use technology to solve business problems. And by defining the problem clearly, we can determine the correct architecture. Now choosing a fully decoupled or headless approach because it's cool, and trust me, I love things that are cool and I love technology, uh, but ultimately that's not the best decision. The, ultimately the business, needs, the business needs and requirements will drive you to the correct solution. So with that, let's start by taking a high level look at the different approaches. Now, there is a spectrum of approaches when it comes to building these digital experiences in Drupal. Now on the left side of the spectrum is Drupal rendered or uh, what you can consider the out of the box experience with core Drupal. And on the far right of that spectrum is a fully decoupled approach which is fully separating Drupal content administration from the display layer or what the user or the public sees. And right in the middle of Drupal rendered and fully decoupled is this third option, this progressively decoupled solution. And that takes the best of both worlds where you have some content that's rendered by Drupal and the rest is carried through APIs. And the ends of the spectrum are typically pretty clearly defined and you've probably seen other webinars or articles about this where they talk about uh, what you can get with core Drupal or Drupal rendered, and then what you can do with a headless solution or fully decoupled. But we find that the middle, that progressively decoupled solution tends to not be as clear. So I know that we've just highlighted the approaches and we'll get back to these in more detail in a little bit, uh, but how do we determine which approach makes sense? And ultimately, Gaining clarity on the approach comes down to asking the right questions and understanding the needs of your organization. It's also important that these questions aren't solely technical. And again, this is coming from me, so it must be true, right? Here are some examples of clarifying questions that can help you determine the right solution. So what business problems are you solving? Where is your organization in terms of digital maturity? What resources and skills do you need to build and maintain your site? What out of the box Drupal features are important to your business? Now, note, it would be very easy for me to go into what is cool or what fad 
is out there as far as frameworks and platforms, but that really there are a lot of other questions that you should be asking that can help clarify what approach makes the most sense. So let's take these questions and dive a little deeper and unpack them a little further. So that first question, what business problem are you trying to solve? So maybe your Drupal site is powering multiple experiences. So for this example, we can assume Drupal is powering your core website, but maybe also digital signage, and maybe you have a mobile application that's pulling data out of Drupal. Now, this could be a case where fully decoupled, where the web experience is coming from Drupal rendered, uh, and then you have another experience uh, that could be partially decoupled, where Drupal is powering the core website, but digital signage and the mobile application is coming through via API. So again, you're separating the, the core Drupal rendered layer with APIs coming from progress, progressively decoupled. Now, another scenario could be, maybe you have a content team or a marketing team that works independently and doesn't wanna be tied to code releases. And we see this a lot. So maybe the marketing team uh, has a campaign that they're trying to launch, or maybe you have a, a commerce arm to what you're doing and there are sales or promotions uh, that you're responding to. And we've seen a lot of that in the past you know, 15 or so months with COVID, uh, just having the ability to respond quickly to the needs of your clients and your customers. You don't wanna be held up with a release cycle or having to wait on developers or IT to promote that code, to push that live. So if there's a scenario where there's critical content and you want your marketing team or your content team to be able to move quickly, Drupal Render would probably be a better solution because that doesn't rely on code pushes or releases. Once you make that update in Drupal, you can publish and that content is live for all to see. Now, if your Drupal site works with an API driven external commerce solution, and that could be something like commerce tools or maybe elastic path, leading to a progressively decoupled or fully decoupled approach may make more sense. Now, again, you're relying on APIs from external systems, and then you also have your core Drupal experience. So Drupal rendered most likely wouldn't be a great fit for that type of scenario. So where's your organization in terms of digital maturity? So supporting the platform is vital to success. The more complicated the platform, the harder it is to support. Now, if your organization has not made a significant effort to create content, a simpler solution probably makes sense. There's no need to unnecessarily complicate things. So an example of this could be, you have content editors that only spend a couple of hours, one day a month, editing content on your site. A simple solution like Drupal Rendered may be best. Uh, however, maybe you're on closer to the other side of the spectrum where you have a team of content editors and they want flexibility to create content in varied and creative ways and send that content to multiple channels. So remember the example where we talked about Drupal power on the main website, but maybe digital signage and a mobile app, this will be a scenario where content is going to different platforms. A solution like the couple, Drupal may be best in that scenario. Another question, what resources and skills do you need? So maybe your team doesn't really know Drupal theming or know React at this point, but you have a solid foundation in CSS. Drupal rendered solution using Aquia Site Studio may be best because that allows you to make updates to the site UI without fully understanding the Drupal theming layer so you can move quickly. Uh, or maybe your internal team has a particular skill set that can also make this option more appealing. So an example of this is maybe you have a strong, a team that's strong in React, Vue, Angular, or one of the other popular front end technologies. That may very well guide your decisioning here to figure out where on a spectrum you should pursue. And it isn't just what skills your team has now. So one thing to also consider is not where you are today, but strategically, where are you heading? What skills do you think your team will gain in the future? What strategic hires are you planning to make moving forward? And let that be part of your decision in here. Which Drupal features are important to your organization? One of the busy, biggest advantages to using a platform like Drupal, and I love talking about this because uh, well, I love Drupal, but you also get a lot of features and functionality out of the box. And there are 40 plus thousand community models, modules also to support what you get from core Drupal. There's a lot there. So it's not just what's included in Drupal core, 
but also just community supporting models, modules that are already built out and ready for you to use. So you can leverage all that pre-built functionality to make your builds go faster, to spend less of an investment, uh, make it easier to maintain, and you don't have to create a custom solution. Now, when you build a decoupled site, you are now building a custom front end for your Drupal website. And by going decoupled, you're either giving up functionality that Drupal already has, either in core with this supported community modules, or you need to build those features of functionality yourself. An example that uh, we use often here is preview. So if you have a Drupal rendered site or kind of core Drupal, uh, you know that out of the box, you can preview pages before you publish and push that content live. So it's an out of the box feature that you get with Drupal. Now, if you're in a decoupled scenario where you're separated Drupal administration from the front end and you still want content preview, that is now a feature that you have to build separate. You need to roll your own solution. And that could be a blocker. And there are other scenarios like that where uh, and just knowing that you have, you're losing these features that you get out of the box and it's extra work, not just to build the first time, but also for your team to maintain, you should be considering that as you're picking your solution. So as you're weighing different features, consider what matters most to your organization. So we've asked a number of questions and uh, hopefully that's, that's starting to shed light on uh, how you can clarify the approach that makes the most sense. But let's dive in a little deeper on these three approaches, Drupal rendered, progressively decoupled in the middle and then fully decoupled there on the end. Let's start with Drupal rendered on the left side of the spectrum. So this is plain Drupal. This is the most straightforward implementation, consists of building templates out for each content type. And it's also the easiest for content editors. So a workflow can be your content editor, you log into the Drupal admin, and maybe you're pushing a press release or an article onto your, your main site. You can log into that content type, fill out the fields, publish that content, and then you're done. That's live for the world to see. Uh, one downside though, to this kind of plain out of the box Drupal experience is that it's also the least flexible of these approaches. And one way you can get around that and gain a little more flexibility is introducing a tool like Layout Builder, which is now included in Drupal core. And what Layout Builder allows you to do is allows your editors to break free from the rigid templates that you get with just taking a, a content type um, editing kind of uh, process where all you're seeing from a display standpoint is coming from the templates that you've built out in Drupal. And instead, you have some more flexibility by introducing Layout Builder into the equation to build unique components. Now, with this addition of Layout Builder comes a little more complexity and uh, but you also get more flexibility with the display. So there are trade-offs. If you want to take it a step further, there is a low code solution. Uh, if you're an Aqua client, Aqua has a fantastic solution. It's a drag and drop uh, component based driven interface called Aqua Site Studio. And that allows you to create these component based experiences, which is kind of like lay layout builder, but it's a, a level above that. And you get a lot more flexibility there. I think we mentioned in a few slides earlier as well that uh, if you have a team that's maybe not as familiar with Drupal theming, that layout builder allows you to do a lot right there in the UI, assuming that you know CSS. So there's a lot of advantages to using a platform like that. Uh, one disadvantage though could be that uh, if you're not in a tool like Site Studio often, so an example could be maybe you've built your site in Site Studio and kind of week one, month one, quarter one, you're in there every day, but as time goes on, you find that your content editors aren't in there that often. And then all of a sudden you need to jump in because there's uh, content that needs to go live really quickly. You have to remember all the steps that you took to, to modify templates within Drupal using Site Studio. So if you're not in there often, maybe that's not the right approach for you. Now let's jump to the far right side of the spectrum with fully decoupled. Uh, this is the new hotness. This is what everyone's talking about. This is where all the articles seem to be coming from talking about decoupled or headless, and you probably have questions about what, what does this mean and how does it fit within our organization? And we're seeing it here at Bountyus. You know, more and more of our clients are exploring this approach uh, that allows you to serve Drupal data via API calls without relying fully on Drupal to render pages. And with fully decoupled, there are some great advantages here. You have complete control over the presentation layer and you're not limited by the CMS presentation layer. And it's also easier to compose and present content from multiple systems. Uh, so for example, if you have the CMS powering part of the experience and then commerce powering other parts. 
So we've also seen that performance can typically be better as well. And an example of this is maybe you're using Drupal API to pull content out of Drupal, and that content is going to a static site generator like Gatsby. For the public site users or people visiting your site, what they are hitting is static pages that are probably being served off a of CDN. They're not really hitting Drupal, they're not really hitting your API, and they're not really hitting your database. So that allows you to have a really performant experience. And also by creating that separation, you could have the Drupal administration happen behind a firewall, kind of off the main internet, and then have all these pages rendered separately. So there are some security implications or wins by separating your content in a fully decoupled manner. However, and there's always a however, right? With great flexibility comes great responsibility. You need to build the presentation layer so you lose out on functionality that the CMS has already built. And we talked about this previously uh, with the preview example. This is a scenario where if that's important to you, you don't get it with this fully decoupled solution unless you build it yourself. Now, lastly, this partially decoupled uh, solution right here in the middle, this approach, this lies right between coupled and headless. So the Drupal rendered and the fully decoupled solution progressively decoupled right there in the middle. Uh, and this relies on rendering content from Drupal, but also relying on APIs that are coming out of Drupal. So you get the best of both worlds. Uh, so on kind of the, the best side of that is you take advantage of Drupal's rendering while layering parts of the experience that are decoupled. And in more complicated digital experience platforms, you can choose to decouple certain items or certain systems. Uh, for another example is commerce. We, we talked about pulling in uh, APIs maybe for commerce tools or from elastic path. That's easy to do and kind of mix and match approaches here with this progressively decoupled solution. So ultimately, you have great flexibility and also great ability to highly leverage Drupal where it makes sense. Now on the not so best, because we talk about the best of both worlds here, uh, complexity of the implementation increases with this solution. So ultimately everyone on the team needs to understand how to work with the different pieces of the system. Content editors need to know how to add, edit, and preview content. Your design team needs to know what components can be used and where. Your development team needs to know how to affect rendering in multiple ways. And this process can also change uh, how you're, you're promoting content and how you're releasing code publicly. So there may be parts of the site where you're able to hop in and make changes right in the admin and others that require a code release. So it's just important that you're considerate of all of those factors. So we've looked at the different approaches to building enterprise Drupal experiences. We've highlighted some key questions you can ask to help you decide what approach makes sense for your organization and delve a little deeper into what those approaches look like and kind of where on the spectrum you can go. Uh, and with that, I'd like to invite Chris to talk now about how we've applied these approaches to projects. Thanks, Laron. Uh, so understanding the spectrum of approaches and the questions we should be you know, thinking about and give us the tools to choose the correct approach. So let's you know, talk a little bit about how we've applied this with a few projects uh, that Bounties has worked on. Uh, you know, one great example is Enterprise Bank of Trust. Enterprise Bank of Trust is a regional financial services company, and they needed to update their branding as well as their platform. Uh, and so they're really looking to rethink the approach to the web and to create a more engaging experience for the customers. They already selected Drupal, so we knew that Drupal was going to be the CMS. So the question really was, how do we leverage Drupal? So thinking back to some of the questions Laron talked about, you know, we started asking these things and thinking about them. You know, do you want your content and marketing teams to work independently of the development team? Uh, in this case, they did. You know, they wanted to, to give them some freedom, but they also wanted some guardrails um, as they got acquainted to a new system. Is this part of a digital experience project where you're looking to tie, you know, the CMS together with other systems? And, you know, they were really focused on the web. So we didn't have to worry about other systems as much, but we did know that they were going to do some personalization in the near future. Who will be adding and maintaining the content on the site? What are their skills? Is this their sole responsibility or one of many responsibilities? So they had a talented team uh, that was really comfortable in maintaining the content, but they also had several other responsibilities. So to Lerone's point, you wanna make sure that that system is as easy to remember how to do those things as possible. You know, what about the development team? What did that look like? Uh, and they didn't have any Drupal experience in-house, but they were definitely looking to grow that in the future. 
So based on these answers, uh, you know, what do you think the approach was? Well, given these responses, you know, we thought that Drupal rendered was the right approach for them. The, the frequency or maybe infrequency of the content changes and knowing that the content editors wouldn't necessarily be in the Drupal system every day uh, because they had other responsibilities to tend to made building an easy to use interface with some guardrails in good place uh, or a good choice for them. Uh, and Drupal is a great framework for this. Uh, the focus was on the web. So there were no other channels for us to really think about in the short term. Uh, so, you know, using a coupled approach and taking full advantage of Drupal made sense for them. The next step for them in the DXP was to add personalization, but we already knew that they were using Acquia personalization, which integrates really nicely with a coupled Drupal approach. And they had uh, no Drupal experience on the development team, but they did desire to bring somebody on in the future. So building and documenting the platform to make it easy for IT to take over in the future was pretty important. Let's look at another example with uh, a few different uh, factors. So E&J Gallo uh, Winery um, is a client of ours. They were looking to replatform onto a new CMS and a new commerce platform. They had a number of different brands as well as tasting rooms and wine clubs. Uh, and one of the goals of their transformation was to make it possible to give a highly personalized journey to the wine customers, while also giving the marketers the advanced tools and flexibility that they needed. Again, we turn to some of those relevant questions to help us hone in on you know, what was the best approach for using Drupal. Are you going to, looking to support multiple channels like you know, mobile apps and digital signs besides your website? Uh, and, and other channels were in the future, but also multiple websites, right? So we knew that the, the platform needed to support a bunch of different uh, scenarios. You know, is this part of a digital experience platform with multiple systems or websites? Well, you know, we knew that the commerce and content needed to be pulled together and pulled together seamlessly to give the, the, the user experience that they wanted to. And of course, the multiple brands affected us as well. So all of these, these questions start to get us thinking. What's the development team's composition and what experiences does it have? So in this example, you know, they had a really talented development team and they were really skilled in uh, some of the JavaScript front end frameworks uh, that are used to do, you know, uh, or build a couple of experiences, but they really had no Drupal 8 theming experience, right? So given this, you know, what do you think? Well, the answer here we, we felt was a fully decoupled approach to the platform. You know, the development team already had the JavaScript framework skills that could really help the project and push it forward. And just as importantly, they wanted to continue to develop those skills as well. And both Drupal and Elastic Path, which was the commerce background here, uh, they work uh, in a decoupled fashion really nicely. Um, so that was great, but you know, because they didn't have any Drupal theming skills, uh, by going decoupled with both ends of the equation, uh, it made it so that they didn't have to learn how to theme in Drupal. And finally, by decoupling, it really made the approach to mixing the commerce and content on the platform less complex as they created these highly personalized journeys. So instead of having to have Drupal ingest content from Elastic Path to display it as you would in maybe a, a coupled experience, um, we didn't have to worry about the, that complex migration. All right. One last example to show us how these questions can help drive our approach. Bounteous. So we recently went through uh, some updates to our existing web platform. And we had originally built the platform on Drupal 8 uh, and we had an implementation that we were very happy with. The, the original implementation uh, was a coupled approach that used Layout Builder to give our marketing team some flexibility in building up the content. But after a couple of years on the new platform, we wanted to update the look and feel, uh, which included plenty of complex animations and uh, to implement that some complicated JavaScript. We we're looking to update a few key areas on the site uh, rather than uh, going with a complete redesign. You know, so what are some of the questions that we asked ourselves? It, does the team have deep knowledge of frameworks like React and Gatsby and Drupal? And uh, yes, as an agency that, that does this, uh, every day, all day for our customers, we have really solid experience and knowledge in, in both the couple of technologies as well as Drupal. Who will be adding and maintaining that content on the site? What are the skills? 
So we had an excellent marketing team uh, and uh, also an excellent development team. So they're both used to working um, with uh, these tools every day. Uh, and so we were pretty excited about that. How quickly does the project need to be completed? Um, you know, we were under a pretty tight timeline. Uh, and so we needed to make sure that whatever approach we use uh, could, could work with that as well. And, you know, what matters to the organization? You know, were we okay rebuilding features that Drupal provided, um, you know, as we custom built and custom solutioned? And we felt that executing the design vision was more important than keeping uh, the out-of-the-box Drupal uh, features there. So given that, what do you think our approach was? <clears throat> so based on these factors, we decided to begin decoupling pieces of the site, uh, but not the entire site. Uh, so progressively decoupled is where we ended. And in fact, we may end up there uh, as we go in the future as well. There's no reason that we will necessarily decouple every uh, part of the site as we go forward. So our development team had you know, a variety of skill sets, including Drupal and Gatsby and React, which were how we chose to implement the progressively decoupled piece of the site. But one of the things that's interesting about our project was that the developers had other commitments as well. Uh, and so we needed an approach that would allow us to work in multiple work streams to be as efficient as possible. So some developers had client work, some developers had some thought leadership work they were working on. And we needed to make sure that we could separate the Drupal web work stream from the React and the Gatsby work streams as well and allow them to build independently and then meet in the middle. Uh, we have a dedicated marketing team in place to support the content and a dedicated you know, development team. Both teams are very skilled. So having this you know, additional complexity was acceptable in the name of getting the exact design correct. Uh, we had a tight timeline, like I, I mentioned, uh, to turn this project around. So it was not really possible to decouple the entire site. However, by decoupling parts of the site, we've achieved our desired outcomes while also ensuring that as time allows, we can come back and uh, decouple the parts of the site that we want to in the future. So now we understand the spectrum of the approaches and the questions we should be asking, uh, and we've seen them in action. So let's talk about what not to do. <clears throat> Some of the common pitfalls to avoid. Um, you know, one of those pitfalls that we've seen is where clients try to decouple too much. So we had a Fortune 500 client of ours that had built a platform that combined both CMS and commerce. And Drupal was used in a coupled fashion while the commerce platform was completely decoupled. And as we talked about a little earlier, this makes it easy to mix the commerce content with the marketing content, which is real plus in the system. The challenge though, when you're decoupling a commerce uh, implementation is that you need to implement all of the pieces for, com for commerce. So while the product category and product detail pages were pretty easy to implement, there are some challenges when it came to the shopping cart flow and the payment functionality. These require tight communication with various other platforms uh, and cause a variety of issues. Whenever you're doing something like this, you really need to think through these integrations uh, so they need to be well planned out and executed. So how would you solve this problem? Well, we, we solved the problem by helping them couple the shopping cart and payment functionalities back to the commerce platform. <clears throat> so the way it worked was Drupal was the glass until the user was ready to check out. And once the user was ready to check out, we turned it over to the commerce platform. Now, this takes advantage of already built and well-tested functionality for the shopping cart um, and payments, right? Uh, and it also allows you to take advantage of other features of the commerce platform as well. And some of these were requirements that we knew were uh, you know, nice to haves and, and things that soon needed to be added. So kind of the lesson here is that the more you decouple, the more you need to custom solution or build for. So in short, for this example, based on their current and future plans, this architecture adjustment right sized their decoupling. Another pitfall we see is where the project does not have the correct stakeholders involved from the beginning. <clears throat> um, you know, here we had a client that asked us to do a discovery with the main question being, you know, what should the architecture of the system be? What should their approach be? And the initiative was driven almost in, exclusively by the IT team. And as we dug into the requirements and we started doing some stakeholder interviews, it became more and more clear that the marketing team was not being consulted. 
So the primary drivers and considerations were all IT focused. Uh, things like, should they be using decoupled versus another approach? Should they be using microservices? Uh, what about the content publishing flow? How will that affect them? And how, you know, what will their role be uh, as content is published? And some of the things that marketing uh, would be concerned about, things like content workflow, personalization, and journey orchestration were largely ignored. So as you approach a DXP project like this, you really need to pull in many different points of view. IT, marketing, legal, analytics, and more are needed to understand what you need to build. Even if this is just a website, you need to take into consideration a wide variety of wants and needs to make sure that the architecture you choose to support <clears throat> supports those things now and in the future. Looking at a small slice of requirements for one group may lead you to choosing a coupled approach, but when all the groups are considered and all the features and functionality are, and requirements are considered, a headless solution may be the place you want to be in the next 12 to 18 months. The last pitfall worth mentioning here is failing to plan for the future. So we had a client that brought us in to assess their platform. Specifically, the client was looking to expand their Drupal site beyond just being a website. The client was looking to start using Drupal um, and, and content to really engage their customers using personalization and other channels. So what are the possibilities based on the platform and the content uh, that was already built was our question. Drupal is a powerful tool and you can build anything you can imagine with it. And you can build that anything in many, many different ways. The way you choose to build Drupal, you, uh, the, uh, the way you choose to build using Drupal and how you uh, build that content out will really dictate how much flexibility there is in the system to accommodate those changes in the future. In this case, unfortunately, we had to tell the client that the platform was not gonna support their needs without heavy refactoring. The platform needed to have multiple content types added and entities added uh, so that the content could be easily be used in, in many channels. The page layouts needed to be adjusted so that they would accommodate personal, personalized content. Um, you know, with a bit of planning and a different approach, all this work could have been avoided. You know, it's vital in these replatform projects that the architecture and approach allow the platform to be flexible in the future. If anything, the past few years have told us it's that we don't know what will come in the next few years, but we can build with a flexible architecture that allows us to adapt in the future. So in summary, Drupal is a powerful and flexible tool. We can do lots and lots of different things. We have a spectrum of approaches that we can use from coupled to fully decoupled. And that approach that we use will be informed by many questions and points of view focused on the business problem to solve, the organization's digital maturity and skill sets, and the project's requirements. So we hope you've learned a little bit from us today. That concludes the presentation. Uh, thank you for attending our webinar. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out or visit our website at bountyus.com.